Hi Gemini, welcome back to the Warrior's Journey Tarot. This is your weekly, well not weekly, it's going to be for 10 days, uh, love reading for February 18th to the 28th. I'm going to use the Fountain Tarot deck for your Celtic Cross and I'm going to clarify with the Romance Angels and the Whispers of Love Oracle cards. So let's get started with your Celtic Cross. This is for Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising and Venus for February 18th. This is what I get for looking away. For February 18th to the 28th. <clears throat> All right, we've got temperance, restoring balance into your life. Whatever you've been doing in excess of it's, or too little of, uh, it's kind of bringing back harmony and balance and restoring that balance. And there's eight of cups walking away from a sad situation on the bottom. So again, this is for Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for February 18th to the 28th. Can we please get a Celtic cross? Also, I already have your monthly love reading posted as well as your bi-weekly general reading and your last week's love reading. They're all posted. I'll link it at the end of this video or if you want to go look through some of my videos for Gemini, you know, there's Valentine's videos. There's all kinds of videos up for you guys. Even tarot haul videos. All right, so back to the reading. This is for love and romance. For Gemini, someone rising in Venus, February 18th to the 28th, please. Nine of Wands, Wounded Warrior, Knight of Cups. Oh, that's like a dreamy, romantic dreamer type, okay? This is for Gemini, someone rising in Venus. I was actually about to go to sleep. It's a late night. I was. I have the time and I have the privacy, so I was like, "All right, I'll just get this done." Um, yeah, but I was gonna go to sleep, and then I just felt that Gemini needed to have their reading done. Three of Cups, celebrations, Three of Wands. This is about waiting for ships to come in. Look, look how he's pulling that rope. Basically, when Two of Wands happens, you're waiting for expansion. You want more. Three of Wands is after you've put out your feelers into the world to try to manifest something and you're waiting for the reward to come back. Three of Cups is celebrating success. And a reunion. Support. Emotional support and, you know, good times with people. Kind of the good old days, going out, drinking, having a good time, cheersing, going on dates. Could even speak to just hanging out with your sisters or your family members. This is for Gemini, someone rising in Venus. For February 18th to the 28th. And there, on the bottom, Page of Swords. That's a spy card. All right. Knight of Coins. Could be a Virgo. That's a situation. Challenged by King of Wands. Consciously the Lovers. There's Gemini. Subconscious, Seven of Swords. Recent Past, Six of Swords. Recent Future. Three of Wands again. You right now, Four of Coins. Surrounding you, the sun, hopes and fears, seven of cups, outcome, nine of swords. Why is that? Hmm. All right. So the situation here is showing the knight of pentacles. And aside from that, possibly being a Virgo, it could speak to a move of residence, a, ch a change in your job, or something where um, some movement and change is happening in the material world, or your material world. Some kind of change. It could speak to anything from your health, to relationships, to a job, to your home, things like that. I know that covers a lot of ground, but now let's talk about love and romance. Knight of Pentacles is someone who is, as a person, loyal, dependable, slow moving and focused on their goal so if this is you gemini it's kind of something that you're not rushing into you have a long term goal set in sight for whoever it is or whatever you're doing 
and you have you have every intention and you know knight of pentacles if they set their focus on something they'll do it it might take them a while they won't rush through it they'll take their sweet time but it will come to fruition that kind of energy and also it could be offering a relationship or an offer of relationship coming in okay however you want to see that then challenge is king of wands king of wands is fire energy it could be aries leo sagittarius and it represents someone who's mastered the wands, that male fire energy, the creation, manifestation, making things happen. The wands are action cards. So when you got king of wands, that means you've mastered the suit of wands, which means you've mastered creating, manifesting, and making things happen. Someone who, uh, if you have to describe the king of wands, it's someone who's older, very like attractive, sexy type, you know, magnetic. They get a lot of attention. They care about their grooming. They care about their appearance, that kind of an energy. And also that the card is about confidence and, you know, machismo. Okay, put it that way. I can't believe I just used that word. Anyways, um, so someone who gets attention, someone who's confident and outgoing. They're not shy. Okay. But the Knight of Pentacles energy, this offering of a material, you know, opportunity whether it be a relationship or whatever it's much more down to earth and grounded so you've got these two kind of conflicting energies one where you're very down to earth and grounded and the knight of pentacles isn't as sure as the king of pentacles it doesn't have the established kind of clout of the king of pentacles the knight of pentacles is someone who's going out there and has a goal in mind and they're very grounded and focused and down to earth and they're approaching that goal the challenge here is to make things happen because the king of wands is all about confidence and making things happen. So that's in the challenge position. Or it could actually speak to someone who's an Aries Leo Sagittarius. Okay? That is a challenge. In the conscious, on your mind, you've got love on the brain. you got the lover's card. That's Gemini. Rules over the lover's card. It's speaking to needing to make a choice in love when you get the lover's card. Um, and it also speaks to if it's not a Gemini, some kind of alignment that's all out of whack. Um, meaning, traditionally in the tarot, you've got Angel Raphael in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve. And you know, Adam is supposed to represent the self-conscious and the Eve is supposed to represent the feminine subconscious and Archangel Raphael is about spiritual consciousness. So when you have all three, you have perfect harmony of the perfect, you know, balance here. So it could speak to the when you see the lover, lover's card on your mind. We're not going to get even into all that, okay? Alignment and choices. and all. Love is on your mind, okay? If not, another Gemini. Now, in the subconscious, you've got Seven of Swords. Seven of Swords is about the Lord of Unstable Efforts. After you leave a sad situation, this is where you're trying to have shaky legs and make a new start. The subconscious hidden feelings here. Feeling shaky. Why? Because here's your challenge. Confidence. So, shaky legs. Trying to make something happen. Trying to build a new life. And crowning you is this kind of, you have to step into this kind of confident role. That's your challenge. To make things happen. To manifest it's not saying you can't do it it's just kind of you see how there's six of swords over here and that's perfect that this is in your subconscious because this is the recent past this comes right before this six and seven so the recent past you left a sad situation here's all the swords something that was causing you to be stressed out and making you you know see if i was an eight of cups or something if it was an eight of cups it'd be like leaving a sad situation that was unfulfilling when you have a six of swords, it's leaving a situation that was causing you mental stress and, you know, difficulties. So the six of swords is where you have to, you know, if we look at five of swords, five of swords is about an abuse of power, winning at the expense of others. It's a disgrace kind of card. It's a bad card. The five of swords and it can also speak to um trying to ask for forgiveness in love and romance and you don't get it 
So what happens is you go to Six of Swords. Now you're leaving that icky situation. Whoever did what to whoever. Six of Swords, you leave. You're going over the water, getting back in touch with your emotions again to land in the horizon over there. When you reach the next shore, it's speaking to getting grounded again. And then you get to Seven of Swords where you have that start where you're making moves to build a new life. Trial and error. No big deal. It's fine. But the only thing about Seven of Swords I would caution you about is the sneaky aspect of it where you're stealing away from somebody else's power it's like the five of swords energy again except now it's up to a few levels um seven of swords is a kind of thing where snooping finding out information that you're not supposed to know you know kind of looking to get because gemini is ruled by mercury you guys love to you know um Find out information and collect information and do your due diligence before you make any decision that's important or, or any decision. So I'm only saying this because the Page of Swords came at the bottom of the deck and that's the spy card as well. Unless it's an actual child that you have who's a Gemini. It speaks to collecting and relaying messages, collecting information. The Page of Swords is someone who's, you know, very... It's a little bit of a nervous energy, but someone who's collecting information and wants to know everything before, you know, whoever they work for or whoever they are has to make a move. And then, so Seven of Swords is kind of getting that information in a sneaky way, stealing away from other people's information. Like, I'm getting a major spy vibe, basically, okay? So in the recent future, you get Three of Wands. Three of Wands is about, as I said before, with two of wands being expansion, wanting more. Like in love and romance, being with somebody in a relationship and then mentally straying and looking for more, looking out into Facebook land, looking out into the world, going out and seeing other people and being interested in them, wanting more. Then you go to three of wands. Well, now you're manifesting. Three of wands is after you've put out those like, you know, messages of love and those little like, you know, cupid darts to people and now you're collecting and you're waiting to get the rewards of all that information that you've been putting out okay basically to you know whatever you've been casting out as bait to wait for the you know fish to come back and take and to bite basically three of wands you right now four of coins four of pentacles is after you've gotten a certain amount of success and acclaim that now you're feeling like you're guarding the, you, what you've achieved very closely, very tightly. You're kind of distrusting of people. You are not open and receptive. When people approach you, you are kind of got this defensive vibe of, of like, what do you want from me? You know, what is this person trying to get from me? That kind of energy. So the Four of Coins speaks to, look at this, in the winterscape, it's cold. And what is their shelter? It's like a thin tent. And there's the four coins at the door. Huge coins. Okay? So it speaks to that kind of energy of being closed off and unreceptive. Uncommitted. Not even wanting to open up. Okay? Around you, though, is the sun energy. Could represent someone by the sign of Leo. And if not, you see this beautiful chubby little plump baby over here on a swing could speak to you know childbirth even and i'm not saying that's for you gemini because i don't see any fertile cards around this so sun here seems like it's about getting newfound clarity around you someone's bringing you clarity or you're finding clarity right now it's a major arcana card it's going to have a major influence on you for the 15th to the 18th to the 28th so this card is saying Whatever was hidden is going to come to light and you're going to see everything clearly and have a clear state of mind. Whereas before you're hiding in your tent here and you don't see nothing because you're so closed off. In your hopes and fears, you got seven of cups. Okay. This is someone who's got a lot of options. This is someone who it can speak in two ways. High vibration. It's you know, let's say going shopping and your pocket's fat and all the stuff in the store is stuff you love and you're just excited as hell. You got lots of time. It's not busy and you can just go look around and, you know, it's like a kid in a candy store. 
all the possibilities okay like that kind of happy energy of oh my goodness you're sometimes they'll show like hands up like they're overwhelmed by my future so bright type of energy now on a lower vibration it could speak to big plans dreaming imagination illusory success not enough action if any action no action's been taken and yet you've got big plans now if this was around a whole bunch of lazy cards i'd be like okay you gotta stop daydreaming and get off your ass if it's around positive cards with like the three of wands making things happen with the sun clarity knight of pentacles is a doer is a is someone who's going to go after what they want so then it tells me it's kind of like your hopes are you, you are going to have lots of options okay opening up to you either that or you're hoping for someone who has already lots of options okay could also be now water signs are Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, Wands, King of Wands energy, Three of Wands energy are Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, the fire signs. Sun is like a Leo sign. And there's the swords are Gemini, as is the lovers. Okay, so this is, this is what's going on. In, and then you got Nine of Swords as well to end with, okay? The Nine of Swords is a very anxiety-filled card. It's where, you know, you, sometimes just look at how he's holding himself. Holding his stomach, it's like, like holding his legs up to him, crouched up, feeling small, feeling scared, um, insecure, feeling fearful, feeling alone. It, it, Nine of Swords is a miserable card, okay? It's just a miserable card. Luckily... Ten of Swords comes next, and then that's when the situation's dead, and you can move on with your life, right? So in the meantime, in between time, Nine of Swords and the outcome, for whatever reason, now, if it's related to the spying energy, I don't know, the outcome here is one of anxiety, misery, stress, feeling very much cold alone like look at this very cold alone feeling lonely feeling miserable feeling okay energy so let's pull some oracle cards this is romance angels can you please get a card for gemini sun moon rising and venus i feel like i'm spying right now myself okay This is for Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. It's for February 18th to the 28th. There it is. You deserve love. Okay, you are lovable. And on the bottom, trust. This situation is calling for you to have faith. Okay, so I'll leave that over here. And I'll read that one. You deserve love. You are lovable. I mean, this goes to Stuart Smalley affirmations. <sighs> but, you know, if it works, why not? You are lovable. You deserve love. Okay, the romance angels are cheering you on in your quest for great love by letting you know that you deserve it. As a child of God, or whatever you believe in, you're naturally a loving and lovable person, as is everyone. You have the right to be treated with kindness and respect by everyone in your life. If you've had harsh life experiences, you may have blamed yourself and felt unworthy of receiving affection. This card is a reassurance that you do deserve it. You're a beautiful being of God's pure love and light, no matter what any person has said or done to you, and no matter what happened in the past. God's handiwork can never be undone. The more you affirm, I am lovable, I am loved, I am loving, the more this experience comes true for you. Affirmations help you believe spiritual truths at a deep unconscious level. This in turn allows you to attract loving people, relationships, and circumstances, and you definitely deserve that. I'll read the bottom one. Trust as well, because I've done it for others. This situation is calling for you to have faith. In response to your question, the romance angels ask you to trust that everything is exactly as it needs to be. Do not add fear to the situation, which will only create drama and negativity. Instead, the angels ask you to release your worries to them. 
Your present situation is here to bring you blessings and personal growth, leading to the beautiful romantic love you so deeply desire and deserve. As you follow <clears throat> the pathway you're currently on, trust that it's leading you in the right direction. Your faith uplifts your energy, which in turn attracts positive experiences and people, including your romantic partner. This truly is a situation where with faith, all things are possible. All right. And next I'm going to post. Oh, okay. I, that just was a slip of the tongue. I was actually looking at my phone and I was about to post something on my other phone because I like to keep them both going when I'm trying to record and post. But I'm going to draw this card first. This is Whispers of Love by Angela Hartfield. Can I get one card for Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for February 18th to the 28th? You know what, Gemini? Just give me a second. I'm going to pause for a second. You won't even know it. And I have to see to this one sec. There we go. Excellent. So let me pull again a Whispers of Love card. Sorry about the interruption. I just had to uh, upload. All right. So this is for Gemini. Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. February 18th to the 28th, please. bottom we've got like attracts like if you're longing for more love in your life you need to be more loving all right and honesty is essential here's another stalker card for us to be a loving person it is important that we speak truthfully and in a loving manner <clears throat> that is straight up my stalker card okay this person there's the moon here, okay? The moon speaking to hidden feelings, secrecy, things that are not out in the clear light of day like the sun, which brings clarity. This person is trying to offer a rose and there's a little cupid here with an arrow pointed at this lovely woman and her back is turned, but she can sense a presence. <clears throat> He's wearing a mask, right? So this whole energy here is of secrecy, deception so let's read about it it says 38 <clears throat> honesty is essential to be a loving person it is important that we speak truthfully and in a loving manner love seeks to do what is best for another person speak honestly tell the truth about your emotions use this as an opportunity to clear the air and turn this into a positive outcome and then I'll read like tracks like with this beautiful little girl. She's playing with a doll who looks just like her. Who's playing with a doll who looks just like her. <clears throat> Basically speaking to whatever you want to attract, whatever you're interested in, are you like that? You have to be in that same vibration with the law of attraction. All right. So number two. If you're longing for more love in your life, you need to be more loving. When we want to create something, the law of attraction states that we need to be in the vibration of what we want to create. Love will come to you easily if you surround yourself with love and easily find things to love about your life. Take a moment to think of the many things you love. Now, I will add one more card. I did this for the other readings as well, but I skimmed on a couple of them. So this is a Gateway Oracle card. I have the energy, so I'm just going to put it into this read because Nine of Swords looks stressed out and doesn't, you know, I don't like to see anybody that kind of in intense kind of misery like that. So let's try to get some Oracle cards to get some more clarity here. And, that, you know, it's coming from this stalker energy. I can tell you right now, Gemini. Okay, because I know you guys love to collect information. I'm not speaking to all the Geminis. I feel like this is a, a male Gemini here that we're talking about. But starting fresh. There you go. Starting fresh. A wonderful new beginning is blossoming in my life. Yay. All right. On the bottom, coming into power, I step into my power boldly and confidently. So let's read about starting fresh. That's what I was waiting for. A nice positive card to end with.
A wonderful new beginning is blossoming in my life. Card meaning. A new cycle is blossoming in your life. All that is not needed from the past is dropping away as you release the old and embrace the new. The universe wants you to know all life travels in cycles. On our beautiful planet, plants die in the winter so that new life can emerge in the spring. It's the spiral dance of death and rebirth. This represents a time in your life to start fresh. Do not linger with old situations, relationships, or places that no longer serve your higher good. Let go and sail into unfamiliar waters. Stretch into a new direction, even if you feel uncertain. Wonderful opportunities await you. Questions to ask yourself. If my life truly started fresh, would I make the same decisions? Am I ready to let go and begin anew? What is blocking me from doing so? So your block here is the king of wands with the confidence. Okay. You're feeling like you don't saying you deserve love. So whatever happened in the past, whatever your situation was, whatever issues you had in the past, it's creating this atmosphere of this energy of thinking that you don't deserve real true love and somehow sabotaging it all the time. So looks like something new is coming in and you've got clarity, newfound clarity here. And it looks like your hopes and fears here, it's hope is, this is about having lots of options. Okay. Um, and the outcome is nine of swords. Let's just clarify nine of swords. We'll put this in the bottom. Okay. Look, queen of pentacles, queen of coins, hangman, sacrifice, hermit, Virgo energy again. Queen of Wands, Fire Energy, Queen of Swords. Okay, so I'm going to leave this here. Let's just clarify the Nine of Swords. Can we please clarify the Nine of Swords, please? it with tower okay another beautiful card on the bottom of the world so this is speaking to an old karmic cycle that's finishing and a new karmic cycle that's coming in which is going to bring in positive change just like these oracle cards said with starting fresh where you're going to feel like you're sitting on top of the world and then you've got the tower card here which is a welcome change to this nine of swords energy Something's going to happen. The Tower card's a fate card. It's all about the ending of something as you knew it. It could be the end of a relationship, a big fight, some kind of, you know, disaster. There's a tone of danger. Some kind of ending, okay? It could even be the undoing of an old way of thinking. There's a lightning bolt that comes down and then the tower breaks. There's people falling to their death. It's something where it's going to come out of nowhere. It's going to have a major impact. And it's going to change everything. about, Especially how you see love and romance. And that's when you get out of this Nine of Swords energy. Maybe it's a revelation that occurs to you. Whatever it is, this kind of energy with spying. Okay, you got three cards for spying. So when I see that, it's just saying, you know, this is cultivating negative karma. So you have to stop. Unless you don't care and you want to keep digging, you know, and then have a miserable life. Now, I'm not speaking to most Geminis here. This is specific. This is for someone who's been keeping tabs on someone extremely um, so, okay? So it's saying start fresh. Know that you deserve love. F trust that if you correct this with faith, that you can, you know, attract what you want to attract and get forgiveness and move on. But 
the tower moment's gonna come and uh you just have to be in the vibration of what you want to attract this is not something unless you want to attract someone who's sneaky and scary and just can't be trusted right so that was your reading gemini for whoever this is this really feels like it's a reading for the gemini guy or guys whoever it could be for one person even okay it seems like it's very specific. I was really feeling like I was going to go to sleep and I was called to do this. So it could be for, you know, very specific people here. And that's it. Otherwise, for the rest of you Geminis who have, uh, you know, things going on, who aren't doing this type of thing, you've got readings up for February, the monthly love, re monthly love readings and uh, the bi-weekly generals. Please do check those out. I also have tarot haul videos where I pick up crystals and new decks. And it's always interesting to see those kind of things. So, um, yeah, hope it resonated for someone and I hope that you're going to see that this is not the way to be. All right. Take care. Talk to you guys soon. Bye.